further down the street, listen for the sounds of the printer's workshop above the stationer's shop. Oh, hello, and welcome to our print shop. Now this is a typical print shop at the time that we're set, and it's a general jobbing shop. So we would print things for the general public, such as dance tickets and letterheads, parish magazines, business cards, and items like that. Now we print by a method called letterpress, and it simply means that the type we use, be it wood or lead, is in relief and the opposite way around, but instead of, of pressing it onto the paper as you would a potato or a sponge, it's locked up in a cast iron frame called a chase, and it's the paper that's then pressed onto the type. And what we use for that, on these three presses, is called a platen, and that's simply a plate. Now the oldest of the presses we have is this Colombian press here, and this was built in 1837 by a company called Clymer and Dixon. And it works simply by winding the bed under the platen and pulling the handle. Now the great lever will then force the platen down and lifts the eagle. And that's the counterweight. Once you've let go of the handle, it'll drop back down, lift the platen up, and then you're able to wind out the bed and remove the printed copy. The Albion press that we have here, the second of our presses, was built in 1863. It originally built by John Cope. And this is a different mechanism. It has a spring action and a little flap so that when the handle is pulled, that will drop into position, forcing the platen down, giving us the print, and then letting go, the spring opens up to bring the plate up. And this would have been used for little business cards and letterheads. The next press we have is the wharf deal. Built around about 1890 by William Dawson and Sons of Otley, and this press is what's called a cylinder flatbed machine. We have two cylinders, the impression cylinder and the little transfer cylinder above it. And when it's in operation, that transfer cylinder will rest on top of the impression cylinder and the grippers are synchronized. When the paper was fed in, the grippers gripped the sheet and it rolled the sheet onto the type as it passed underneath. And then after that, it's automatically put onto the backboard. Our last press is the Arab Platen, and it was built around about 1903 by Josiah Wade. And this has an upright bed. And that's because of the inking rollers, which will pick the ink up from the inking pad and ink the type. Then the Platen will come up and press the paper against it, coming back for the girl to remove the printed copy and an experienced woman feeder could print at a rate of about 900 copies an hour because this press, like the Wharf Deal, is electrically powered. Well, them are the presses we have at Beamish, and we hope you've enjoyed your little visit, and hopefully we'll see you again in the future. Across the road at the Co-op, you can hear about shop life, the important role of the cooperative movement, and how the store was the hub of the community. The drapers sold materials and items suitable for making and repairing clothing. In this department you can see the cash machine operating. Made by Lamson and Paragon, the system ensured that all transactions were recorded and held centrally in the cash office. This was essential for the calculation of the dividend. Welcome to the co-op at Beamish. This is our 1913 supermarket. You'll find things are considerably different in some ways. You won't see a trolley like you would at a supermarket today. You bring your list to me and I get all the products that you need from the shelves and bring them to the counter. We have a complete range of food, fresh vegetables and fruit, our dairy products, meat, and of course, a huge range of consumable products. We don't have modern fridges or vacuum packing. Everything is there on display. and You, the customer, can purchase whatever quantity you want. I'm quite happy to sell you one individual egg. Or, if you have enough money, a complete side of bacon. In order to help people recognise my products, we have a colour-coded system so that you can recognise what you're buying. Dried fruit would be in blue. 
Peas in yellow, lentils in orange, and butter beans in green packets. If you'd like to come down here, you can have a look at some of the consumables, a number of which were actually produced for the co-op. We have drawers that contain various herbs, so the customer can have whatever quantity they want. It can be packed into our paper cone, known as a poke, weighed, and the customer gets exactly what they want. Another feature of the Cooperative Wholesale Society, or the CWS, was their dividend system. Loyal customers were rewarded because every three months, 20% of what you'd spend would be refunded to you. Once you'd bought your products, if you couldn't carry them home yourself, then they would be wrapped and taken back to your house on a delivery bike. Have a good look round. See what we have on sale. See what you recognise and what has changed. Enjoy your shopping. Just to the west of town, you can visit a typical country station with waiting room, ticket office, signal box and goods yard. This is the station's signal box. The signalman was charged with the safe operation of signals on the line. Some of the instruments you can see were used for messaging. Originally from Car House concert, the signal box is typical of those seen around the region some of which are still in existence. So, take a trip to our 1913 town and station to learn more about life in another time.